On the day they were going to kill him, Jun Seo did not arrive at his liquor store until 5 p.m. Another checkup with his doctor had eaten most of the day and unfortunately was part of his new routine after a botched robbery left him with a bullet hole in his liver. The little store meant the world to Jun Seo. It was a result of 15 years of hard work. That's probably why he wasn't gonna let someone walk right in and empty his register. Especially not some fucking beaner, as he often said when referring to Mexicans. To him, they were good for nothing, wasting taxpayer dollars and stealing jobs from the real people who needed them. In the days after the incident, Jun Seo confessed to having no remorse for killing the young man. The only thing he regretted was not having fired first. If he had, his liver would be intact and his store would have opened on time, just as it always had. It turns out that the Mexican killed by Junseo had a little brother, Eladio. Apparently the kid couldn't bear the idea that the man who killed his brother was still alive and he wasn't gonna let it stay that way. His brother probably would have done the same for him. In Eladio's mind, all Koreans were the same. Greedy motherfuckers who treated everyone like they were thieves. All while nickel and diming the entire community over stale bread. All he wanted was some justice. And his old man's Smith & Wesson was gonna help him get it. Elsewhere, Eladio may have gone unnoticed, but not in that hood, and not by JD and his friends. JD was particularly sick of the Mexicans as they had been gaining more and more territory. He viewed them as cockroaches, worthless pests that knew little more than how to breed and infest. Despite his feelings, JD was above all a businessman. He needed to get that kid out of there before he got himself shot. A dead kid would bring cops, and cops were bad for business. Just a few blocks away, Mike Egan, an off-duty police officer, stopped off at Junseo's store. It wasn't his neighborhood or his beat. In fact, cops like him didn't go around there, and everyone knew it. But Mike was on his way home when he remembered he promised his daughter a candy bar. Just being there for a few minutes made Mike uncomfortable. He often said that not all the people who live in the ghetto were a problem. But if they would just let all the gangbangers and welfare monkeys either overdose or kill each other, the problems would be solved. Turns out Mike would never find that candy bar. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. Eladio had been planning that moment for weeks. He really wanted the Korean to know he was gonna die. He figured he would put the pistol in his face and say, remember my brother, you fucking chink? Now it's your turn. But the kid changed his mind. He needed something shorter, something more direct. This is for my brother. This is for my
Eladio stopped next to the air fresheners. His forehead sweated profusely as he looked nervously at Jun Seo, which meant he was making the same mistake his brother made, in the same place and with the same Korean. J.D. was saved by his reflexes, and oddly enough, ended up doing what Eladio came to do. A black avenging the death of two Chicanos. Hard to believe. Eladio didn't realize that life was not like the movies. There was no time for threatening sentences or warnings. Of course, at that point, Mike didn't even bother to yell freeze or drop your weapon. After all, the guy had a gun. And he was just another fucking nigger. that all that blood from the nigger, a chink, a spick, and the fucking cracker. It all became a single puddle and slipped through the same drain.